hope you're doing great. Before moving into today's topic, we would like to thank you for your support to our family here in Dr. Siddiqui Tube. Thank you for sharing the videos and growing the family, for commenting here and through email. Your words mean a lot to us. We are happy that we are expanding your knowledge through very simple doses and also we touched your hearts and lives and helped you with some self-care as well. That was a must thank you and now without any further ado, let's get started. Well, today we shift a bit from dosage form design to tap on another interesting branch of pharmaceutics that is biopharmaceutics. I do recommend you watch our introduction to biopharmaceutics video before continuing this one and you will double the joy and catch all today's information much much quicker. So getting into point now. Well, today we will cover some general aspects about drug absorption and illustrate some basic biopharmaceutical terms that will come across the biopharmaceutics series. Alright, so we already know that the API or the active pharmaceutical ingredient or ingredients are usually formulated in a certain dosage form which can be taken through various routes of administration. To fresh your memory about this, you can watch the dosage form design video. I'll put a link to that video in the description box for you. But generally, we aim at making the drug reach the general circulation because there or from there. Because from there, it will travel its way to the desired site of action. So we make our best to make certain concentration reach the bloodstream. So, if a drug is administered through an IV route, what is the estimated percentage of the drug that can reach the general circulation? Pause it here, think about it and play the video again to know the answer. Well, as a DCT Dr. Siddiqui family member, I know you got it right. It's 100% because all of the drug is delivered directly to the bloodstream when taken intravenously. However, if the same drug is taken through any other route, there is no guarantee that all of it will reach the general circulation. The fraction of the drug from the administered dose that reaches the blood circulation intact is called the bioavailable dose. That dose reflects the amount of the drug reaching the systemic circulation and together with the rate at which that happens define the bioavailability. So the bioavailability is the rate and extent of drug absorption. Well, about 90% or more of drugs are taken orally and for such drugs to be 100% available in the general circulation, there are some must that must be met. 1. The drug must be entirely liberated from the dosage form, whether it's a tablet, a capsule or any other oral dosage form. 2. It must also completely dissolve in the gastrointestinal fluids. 3. The drug should retain its stability till it reaches the blood, thus should withstand the gastrointestinal fluids. Another thing to consider if we want 100% of an oral drug to get into the blood is number 4 and that is the drug should not be liable to metabolism prior to reaching the general circulation. It should pass through the GIT without being metabolized and if it gets to the liver through the porter circulation before reaching the general circulation, it should get out from there and change and that is 5. If any of these must was not met, then a less than 100% of the drug will get into the blood at the end. Until today, this is the case with the oral dosage forms. 
the why question for this point will be dealt with in a new future video. Now getting into another why. That is why a given drug can have different bioavailabilities. Well, there are three main reasons for that. One is the drug can be formulated into different dosage forms and the different dosage forms won't deliver the drug to the blood neither as the same exact rate nor the same extent therefore different dosage forms of the same drug have different bioavailabilities two assume we formulate the same drug using the same dosage form however the formulation ingredients or the percentages were not the same. That also can lead to variable bioavailabilities for the same drug. The third reason is the route of administration. The same drug can be administered through different routes and that can cause difference in bioavailability for the same drug as with the example of the IV and the oral route we mentioned earlier. So, in summary, bioavailability is the rate and extent of drug absorption and the same drug can have variable bioavailabilities depending on the formulation, dosage form and the route of administration. With this, we come to an end today. Till next time, stay fabulous wherever you are.